Okay, so welcome back. This is part four in our series where we show you how to build and program an automated sweep frequency response tester. And I encourage you to look at the previous videos. We showed you how you can, for example, test a transformer by sweeping the input frequency and measuring the response of the transformer. And in the previous video, we looked at how we can program our function generator, our, our signal generator, to sweep its frequency every second or so. In this video, we're going to show you how to program what you see here, which is our oscilloscope. And again, you can use this on just about any manufacturer of oscilloscope. We're going to use a Rigel 1054Z, but the, the concepts apply to just about anything, I think. We're going to show you how to program this so when we vary the frequency of our signal generator, we can measure on the scope. We've got VPP, which is the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. And we're going to measure that value every second as we vary the frequency to build a um, sweep frequency response graph. So what I've got here is I've got um, the application we're going to be looking at. This basically allows you to connect to your oscilloscope and do simple reads and writes. And what we can do here, for example, um, it uses what's called a skippy command. We looked at that in previous videos. What is skippy? And what I can do is I can just change this value in the skippy command to 5 volts and hit write. And it will change the scale automatically via the USB connection. It will change the scale of the voltage. So we're going to use this to not only configure the oscilloscope before we do the sweep frequency response, but also to measure every second or so as we change the frequency. We're going to measure this V peak to peak. And presently we're at 13.2 volts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the skippy command that we can use that should measure 13.2 volts. So I'm going to write that command and then read it. And you can see the result. It's kind of small, but it says 1.3 E1. So it's 13 volts. So this is basically the commands we're going to use to set up the um, oscilloscope and then measure every second or so as we sweep the frequency, what's the resulting V peak to peak. So we can generate a sweep frequency response plot. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get set up with whatever resources we're going to need. Now we're going to be programming our scope using Microsoft Visual Studio C -sharp .net. However, you can use other methods for programming your scope. You can use MATLAB, LabVIEW, Visual Basic, Visual C++, Excel. But we're going to choose Visual C Sharp. And we're going to be using National Instruments Visa implementation which thankfully has already set up a Microsoft Visual C Sharp solution for what we need to do. So it's really wonderful. All we have to do is download the examples that they provide. And it'd be very easy for us to get up and running with our own software. And we just need to copy over some of the code in those example solutions. So it's really wonderful. and It's a very easy way to get up and running to program our scope. So um, our scope, our Rigol 1054Z, is going to use skippy commands, simple commands for programmable instruments. We talked about that in the previous video. Those commands are documented in the Rigol programming guide. So to get that, you need to go to Rigol, R-I-G-O-L-N-A dot com, and you can go to the 1000Z series. And if you scroll down, you can see that it's got manuals and programming manuals. And you're going to want to download the DS1000Z programming guide. And that provides a list of all of the skippy commands that are available for this particular scope. You can see this is May 2019. And it's got basically all of these skippy commands that we can use. It also has at the end of this a set of programming demos uh, for Excel, MATLAB, LabVIEW, Visual Basic, Visual C++. We're not going to use those, but just so you know, it's there and it goes through the steps to do that. Hopefully it's up to date for whatever you want to use, but it's there if you want. But what we're going to use it for is all of these skippy commands. So once you've downloaded the Rigol programming guide, you also need to install Ultra Sigma from the Rigol website. Um, presumably, you've already done that. In the same location, go to Downloads, 
an Ultra Sigma in instrument connectivity driver and also Ultra Station. Again, we did that previously in the other videos. Uh, Ultra Sigma is very important. It's got a lot of the stuff we need to program the scope. Um, it also installs some IVI visa components in this location, C program files IVI. However, it does not include the C sharp.net examples we we're talking about. And I'm not sure if it's up to date, may or may not be, but um, you do need to install this Ultra Sigma. And the most important thing we need to install is from the National Instruments website, the NI National Instruments Visa downloads. And that is going to include up-to-date drivers, and it's also going to include the example solutions, the C-sharp solutions that we can use to flesh out our um, application. So really important um, that you download those first. So let's go through the steps in how to do it. So now to install the very important National Instruments Visa software, you go to ni.com and go to support software and driver downloads, NI driver downloads, um, Windows operating system version 2022. And what you can do is hit download and then you'll run this uh, package manager and it will ask you what packages you want to install. I've already got it installed, so it's not going to do anything. But um, just go through and see what packages you want. You can install C++. You can install all kinds of things. But select what you want. And it's going to take a while to install, but that will give you a lot of the Visa software plus the examples that we're going to be using. Now that we have that installed, the NI Visa, um, the example c .net code is located in C, Users, Public, Documents, National Instruments, NI Visa, Examples.net, 22.5. So if we go to C, Users, Public, Public Documents, National Instruments, you can see there's two folders. Uh, we'll double click on the NI Visa. You see there's documentation and examples. And these are .NET examples and 22.5 and you can see there are one two three four five solutions uh, visual studio solutions in c sharp that will help us get going there is a find resources solution which basically just helps you to find whatever uh, network or usb resources are out there that will help us find our oscilloscope there's a register based operations there's a service request a simple asynchronous read-write and a simple read-write. We're going to use the simple read-write and the find resources to help us identify our scope and then do simple reads and writes. And if you double click on the sim simple read-write, you can see simple read-write.2015.solution. So all we have to do is double click on this solution and we have a um, already set up like we showed in the beginning of this video. Uh, solution that we can run and read and write commands to our scope. So here is our solution, simple read write. And you can see it's very simple. It has our main form, which I have collapsed, but it's got some stuff in here. And some of it we're going to use, some of it we're not going to use. And it also has two user interface. It's got the main form when you start this up where you can open and close a session. It's got a string text box for a skippy command. And then here's a query, write, and read, like we showed before. There's a separate UI. When you open the session, it gives you a list of available resources, and you can select that and hit OK, and then go back to the main form and enter your skippy command. So really pretty straightforward. In our application, we're not going to necessarily use these. All we need is to be able to select the resource and then send a fixed set of commands. So we're not going to have to have much of a UI for this. But you can see it's pretty straightforward. We just start it up and we get the simple rewrite. Open session. I can select USB 0 instrument that's my scope these are usb devices one of these is my uh, signal generator and this is another usb device i've got so i can hit ok and now i am all set to send skippy commands to my scope i can close the session 
I can read, write, and query. So we'll close the session and quit. So now all we need to do is see if we can figure out what's going on here to find the resource and to send and receive. And then we can basically copy and paste those into our other application we've been using so far so that we can um, send commands to the scope every time we change the frequency of the signal generator. So now when we look through this uh, example solution, there's some important things we're going to need to take away. Like I said, we don't want all of the code in the solution. We just want the important stuff. There's two DLLs we're going to need to add as references. IVI.visa.dll and nationalinstruments.visa.dll. And we'll see that when we go back to the solution. Those are the two main DLLs that are going to have all the references we need. Then when we use Visa from the nationalinstruments.visa DLL, there's two main functions in that uh, Visa DLL that we're going to need. The first one is called the Resource Manager. What that does is it goes out and it finds the resources on the system. In other words, it will find the USB or Ethernet LAN oscilloscopes or signal generators or whatever. So we're definitely going to need that to find our scope on the um, USB. Also, we're going to need the message-based session. Again, that's a Visa function that provides access to reading and writing from our device. So you're going to see in the code, there's a resource manager to find the, the resources and a message-based session to read and write to them. And also in this code, what they've done is they've added a class called select resource. And that includes the UI where you click on which resource you want to connect to. And it's going to use this resource manager. So we're going to have to look at this resource manager message based session and the select resource class and extract the code that we're going to need. And again, we're going to have to add these DLLs. So now before we get into this, I want to show you a little tip that might help. Um, you may notice that this solution they give you, the form, the, the, the font, everything is really small. What I've done here is I have increased the size of the font and all the buttons. There's a very simple way to do that. Um, here we're in our main form and then our select resource form. And I've done it in both. So just go to the design of that form and then go to edit and then select all. And it selects all the components on that form. And then down on the right here, you can go to the font and you can, I've set it up to be size 12 font. And also you will notice that all of many of these controls are locked. In other words, you can't change the size of the buttons. You can't move anything. So as with all of these selected, you can go down to under locked. Um, I've changed it to false. And now you can move and resize all of the components. Now that we've got that, um, what I've decided is instead of using our previous um, solution where we program the signal generator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, National Instruments solution as our base solution and then copy the code from our other solution into this. I think it'll be a little bit easier, which means we're going to have to go through and modify um, these UIs to make them work also with the signal generator. So we know this works with the oscilloscope, so adding code um, for the signal generator and just reformatting this should be a lot easier. So I think in the next video, what we're going to do is take this solution, modify it to um, allow us to set up the signal generator, and then do all of the data gathering and then plotting on this main form. So we're going to modify this form. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.